Now, initially, patients lose their short-term memory, or their recent memory, who had developed Alzheimer's disease. And as memory loss mounts over time, the impairment of other intellectual functions happens. But age is the greatest risk factor for Alzheimer's disease. And about 15% of people who get the disease are familial. You heard Susan Collins talking about all the people in her family who have the disease, or have had the disease, many of whom have died already. Ronald Reagan and his mother both had Alzheimer's disease. He died at 93 and she died at 79. Now there's a large amount of evidence that's been accumulated in terms of the causation of Alzheimer's disease that a peptide called the A-beta peptide, so that little B is really a beta, it got changed, and that this peptide is toxic to nerve cells. And this has come through a lot of work, and from my point of view, the cause of Alzheimer's disease is pretty clear. Now there are a lot of details in the pathogenesis, the steps uh, that we need to know about. And these are going to be very important as we develop effective therapies. Besides the A-beta peptide, which forms plaques, tangles are found in the brains of Alzheimer's disease. And these tangles are filled with another protein called tau. But what I think we need to do is to define each step in the pathogenesis of the disease as the disease develops. We need to identify new drug targets. We have some drug targets, but we don't have enough. Drug development is a game of numbers. And the numbers need to be very big, and thus it's very costly. Now along the way to creating drugs, we need cell models. And we don't have good cell models of Alzheimer's disease. In fact, it's easy to argue that we have no cell models of Alzheimer's disease. And the animal models that we do have need to be vastly improved for advanced stages of drug discovery. They're critical when we test drugs that we develop <coughs> from using cell models. Now, we also need reliable biomarkers. There's been some interest lately that the cerebral spinal fluid may contain enough of the A-beta peptide to be measurable and that that can be used, that can be helpful. But we really need markers in the blood, if at all possible. Now, my own bias is toward imaging techniques because we are able to look at the brain. Each part of the brain is different. Each synapse in the brain is different. And only imaging, the power of imaging, can show us these individual synapses and the individual changes that are going on outside and next to and within neurons in the brain. Now, as we try to create drugs for Alzheimer's disease, one of the problems with the disease is that it's slow. And so we have trouble looking at the response and quantifying that response. In science, numbers is, are at the core of everything we do. So hopefully we can develop imaging techniques that can allow us to measure the response very accurately. This has been an area that is really wanting. Now, I hope that all of you agree that modern science is truly awesome. I hear this word all the time, teenagers, young adults, awesome. Everything is awesome. And I want to, I don't know, I, I won't use the words that my response, my visceral response to hearing this. But science is awesome. That's a correct use of the word. <laughs> science is remarkable in what it can do and what it's done. And we now know the causes, the molecular chemical causes of hundreds of diseases. And until you understand the chemistry, you don't understand anything about the disease except how horrible it is. Now some brain diseases, and the most common ones, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, these diseases are caused by aberrant forms of proteins. The proteins are misprocessed. And modern science allows us to synthesize millions of small molecules, small chemicals, that can ultimately turn into medicines. We just have to figure out which one we need from these millions. Now, we can create drugs that restore intellect and memory. We can create drugs that stop Alzheimer's disease. 
But along the way, we probably are going to need to know much more about memory and language and judgment and behavior. So we can't just take a very narrow focus. It's very important for us to move the whole area of intellect and memory and the preservation of these forward at the same time. And that's because nobody can stand up here and tell you the exact route to a cure for Alzheimer's disease. But we know, one thing we do know is that we can get there. That's clear. Now, about 500,000 people die of cancer in the United States annually. But the death rate is going down. About the same number are diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease each year. So this is a cancer-sized problem. This is not a small problem. It's a big, big problem. And we're spending about six and a half billion on cancer research at the NIH. We're spending about three billion on HIV AIDS. And we're spending 450 million on Alzheimer's disease. So cancer, we're spending about 15 times as much money annually and about seven times more on AIDS. Now, the cancer pipeline for new drugs is remarkable. There are 800 new drugs that are coming from this pipeline. In the next five to six years, cancer treatment will change dramatically. It'll be hooked to sequencing your DNA, and it'll be personalized, and the results will be dramatic. The AIDS pipeline is, excuse me, the Alzheimer's pipeline is empty. The AIDS pipeline is also quite large. We have an empty pipeline in Alzheimer's disease. So when I talk with people like George, George is such a wonderful, kind, diplomatic man, and I say it's empty, and he says, Stan, can't you be a little more gentle about this? <laughs> and I say, no, because every time I come in contact with another venture capitalist and his chief scientific officer, they tell me they've got a cure for Alzheimer's disease, and I sit there, and in less than three minutes, it disappears. It's just the biggest nonsense that I've ever encountered. Now, the Congress has to do something about this. We have to have the political will of the Congress behind us. The scientists cannot do this alone. So I'm going to conclude by saying that this is the biggest challenge on our planet. It's growing all the time. As long as the overarching goal of humanity is to prolong life, the Alzheimer's problem is going to grow until we stop it, because age is the greatest risk factor for this disease. And while it's difficult to predict the exact course of future discoveries that are going to lead to the prevention and treatment of Alzheimer's disease, it's clear that research as usual, the status quo, is going to bankrupt our nation. You heard all of that from Ken. You heard it from people in the Congress, you heard it from Sandra Day O'Connor. And we have an Alzheimer's tsunami on our hands. But our nation, and this is the only nation in the world that's going to solve this problem. You can't look to Europe. They're not going to do it. Possesses the scientific talent, the imagination, and the dedication to conquer Alzheimer's disease. What's missing is the political will. The Congress and the President have to get behind this. Our political leaders have to create a strategic focus. And when they do that, they're going to create the necessary funding. So I'm confident we can stop this disease. And I know that my colleagues, hundreds of scientists who study Alzheimer's disease every day, have the same confidence. So by 2020, 10 years from now, with the right political backing, we'll have medicines and we'll change the course of human history. Thank you.